Quantum physics is the study of matter and energy at the most fundamental level. It aims to uncover the properties and behaviors of it, the variability blocks of nature. While many quantum experiments examine very small objects such as electrons and protons, quantum phenomena are around all of us, acting at every scale. There are many different concepts in quantum physics and quantum mechanics. Some of the most popular include Schrodinger's cat, string theory, dark matter, and how the universe works with the basics of matter. The field of quantum physics arose in the late 1800s and early 1900s from a series of experimental observations of atoms that didn't make intuitive sense in the concept of classical physics. Among the basic discoveries was the realization that matter and energy can be though thought of as a discrete packets or quanta that have a minimum value associated with them. For example, light of a fixed frequency will deliver energy in quanta called photons. Each photon at this frequency will have the same amount of energy, and this energy can't be broken into smaller units. In fact, the word quantum has Latin roots and means how much. Early models depicted electrons as particles that orbited the nucleus, much like the way satellites orbit Earth. Modern quantum physics instead understands electrons as being distributed with in orbitals, mathematical descriptions that represent the probability of the electron's existence in more than one location within a given range at any given time. Electrons can jump from one orbital to another as they gain or lose energy, but they cannot be found between orbitals. Another concept is superposition. This is the term used to describe an object as a combination of multiple possible states at the same time. A, super, suppo, a superposed object is analogous to a ripple on the surface of a pond this, that is a combination of the two waves overlapping. In a mathematical sense, an object in superposition can be represented by an equation that has more than one solution or outcome. This concept fits right into the other, more popular Schrodinger's cat experiment. Two main vocab words that you'll need to know for this concept are superposition and entanglement. The cat thought experiment starts when you picture a radioactive particle in a box with a cat, and there is a radi radiation detector in the box that, if activated, will break a beaker full of cyanide killing the cat. But if the particle doesn't decay, then the cat will still be alive, so you can call the cat entangled with this particle. This theory is called entanglement. The video playing now will help simplify this concept and help you understand more of this experiment. As far as we can tell in the subatomic world, everything is just so ridiculously and frustratingly random. You look at an electron and sometimes you look at it and it'll have a spin pointing up. And the next time you look at it, it will have a spin pointing down. And you're like, can't you just pick one? Why do you have to be both? Why do you have to keep flipping back and forth? I'm Paul Sutter and this is Paul Explains, the show where I, you know, explain. The whole machinery of quantum mechanics is designed to translate the probabilities of what you might measure when you go to make an observation. In the case of an electron spin, the language that we use in quantum mechanics goes something like this. The spin of the electron is in a superposition of both spin up and spin down states. And then when you go to measure it, something happens and it chooses one of those states and that's what you actually measure. But some of the founders of quantum mechanics didn't really like how this was being described. One of those people was Erwin Schrodinger, the, one of the founders of quantum mechanics. He looked at this example, this language, and developed a thought experiment to show just how lame this language is. He said, what if? You put a cat in a box, you close the lid, and you put some radioactive element in there. And just say that there's a 50-50 chance that the radioactive element will decay and will poison the cat and it will kill the cat. But there's a 50% chance that it won't decay, nothing bad will happen, and the cat will live. Now, as long as you have that box closed, you don't know what's gonna go on. You don't know if the cat is alive or dead. And then you open up the box, you perform your measurement, and you see either a dead cat or an alive cat. Classically, non-quantum mechanically, we would think that at some point the cat might or might not die, but our observation of it, our measurement of it, has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on inside the box. Either the cat is dead or it is alive, we just haven't found out yet. 
But Schrodinger pointed out that in quantum mechanics, the way we're supposed to think about it is that the cat is both dead and alive. It exists in the quantum superposition of deadness and aliveness. And when we open up the box, that is the moment of the choice. That is the moment of the cat becoming dead or becoming alive. But until we open up the box, it is both dead and alive. And Schrodinger said, this sounds really dumb. Do you actually expect us to believe this when it comes to quantum mechanics? And everyone else who was working on quantum mechanics said, yes. How do you wrap your mind around this? Well, maybe you don't have to. Maybe reality is just weird and we should leave the cats alone.